Hey man, that's one of my favorite songs. Amen. Every time I hear that song, it just gets me excited. Amen. I love to hear that song. So again, I want to thank Brother Cross for that selection. I also want to thank those sisters for yesterday's food. Oh my goodness! If you wasn't don't know about our breakfast, we had the breakfast yesterday uh, morning, and it was excellent. A great day of fellowship and. Uh, definitely a good day of eating. Uh, I enjoyed every bit of it. And uh, and we were told yesterday, as always, we got the best cooks in the whole brotherhood. And I'm proud to be a part of it. I posted on Facebook yesterday. We got some awesome, amazing, wonderful sisters. Because we really do. And I just, again, just grateful uh, to be over here with you all. It's not like it's so much going on, though, in all our families, a lot of deaths in families, a lot of just a whole lot of issues going on and, uh, throughout the brotherhood. So, Got to start praying one for another. As I know we love each other and we want the best for each one of us. We just got to start praying for each other, Lord, that the Lord will guide us to make better decisions each and every day of our lives so we can start living a more godly life. Amen. Am I right about it? Amen. Well, I won't hold you too long today. Y'all know I get right into my sermon. Uh, enough preliminaries already. <laughs> I had uh, read for your hearing Isaiah 55, uh, verse 6 through 9. Where the Bible reads, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways, your ways, my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. I chose for a topic today, you thought, but God has said. You thought, but God has said. I'll make three points and the lesson will be yours. Our thoughts must align up with what God has said. Amen. You got to ask yourself, are your thoughts godly thoughts well, or are they wicked? Amen. And lastly, it's time to let God do the thinking for you. Amen. The world we live in today, we got a lot of super intelligent people in this world, don't we? Amen. We create all kind of technologies and things that really help to enhance our life. If you look at the biblical times, they had horses and mules to get around transportation-wise. Now we got cars. We can take a car and get from here to there very quickly. So man thought of a way to improve and enhance our life. When we think about computers, I remember back in the day, everything was done manually. Now, all we need is a computer to do each and everything in our lives. Amen. And all those inventions are really good. They really help us in this side, time side of life. <coughs> But men have gone a little too far and started inventing things for the use of God's house. And that's when you go a little too far. It's okay to have something to help us here on this time side of life. But once you start adding to what God has said, yeah. then we got a problem. Amen. Remember they said Houston, we got a problem. Well, Dallas, we got a major problem going on right now. Where people want to do what they want to do that's not authorized by God. Come on. But I know we all smart and intelligent and everything, right? But God didn't make you to where you didn't, you didn't need him. He didn't make you where you're smart enough to where you can do things on your own. Y'all like y'all don't believe. Go to the Bible and prove what I'm saying to y'all. Go to Jeremiah 10 and 23. Because I know a lot of us might be a brainiac and uh, super, super duper smart. And we think we're the smartest person in the room. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I know, I know that the way of man is what? Is not in himself. It is not in a man that walk it to direct his own steps. So God didn't even make you to where you can do everything on your own. He made you where you needed him to live your life. No, a lot of times we think we can do everything on our own. But God didn't even make you that way. He made you where you got to direct your steps if you want to be with him. Because when you start directing your own steps, it's going to be some evil things going on. That's like in the first world. They're continually, continually evil all the time. And where does it start? 
It starts in the mind. That imagination gets the best of you. Y'all remember the Temptations had a song out years ago? It was just my imagination running away from me. In his mind, he had a girlfriend, and all this stuff was going on with this girl. But his evil mind, his evilness, he was thinking this and imagining this stuff, but it started right in his mind. According to Genesis 6 and 5, he said, And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And every imagination yeah. of thoughts of the heart was only continual evil continually. So it starts right there in your mind. You start imagining it. Well, I wonder what it would be like to be with that woman. Or, well, I wonder if it would be like to have be a millionaire. What could I do with all that money? But it all starts right here in the mind. But the wickedness of man has become, become so wicked. That it went from all the way from all those things, and now he want to invent and do things for God that God never asked for. But this type of evil in religion today is not going to be tolerated. Jesus, all these people come with all these different ways. They say, well, you can come over here. It doesn't matter what church you go to. The church is your choice. It's just okay. As long as you're going somewhere. I've heard people on TV say, go to somebody's church on Sunday morning. I know if y'all have heard that before, too. Amen. But Jesus is going to create it one way. According to John 14 and 6. I want somebody to get that for me. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. So Jesus is not saying I got a bunch of ways for you to go. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And you got to come through me to get that. Yeah. So I know you look on almost every corner, right around this neighborhood, you see a church. A church here and there, a church there everywhere. All over. You see a Baptist. You see the denominational churches on the way over here today. If you woke up this morning and looked at TV, you seen Joyce Meyer. Or you seen Joel Osteen. Or Counterfeit Ca uh, Dollar. What's, what's his name? Cleflo. <laughs> or TD Fakes. Or you seen one of them guys today when you woke up this morning. And a lot of people think those are holy people. They think they doing some righteous things. But Matthew 7, 21, what does the Bible say? Not, every, Not everyone, everyone that says unto me, Lord, 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 Lord shall enter into the kingdom, into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Is in heaven. So he, you, can, you can be all holy than thou, say, oh, Lord, I love you, God. All these churches doing that every day. But the Bible said that not everyone that does that belongs to me. So what you got to find out is who does belong to God? Who are his children? Who is he coming back for? Because if you look at man's way, there's many, many ways to go. You can go to a church of God in Christ. You can go to a Baptist church. You can go to a Methodist church. According to man. That's what man has said. But let's go to Isaiah 55 and 6. Isaiah 55 and 6. I want somebody to read that for me. Seek ye the Lord. Seek ye the Lord. While he may be found. While he may be found upon call him. upon him while he while is he near. near. So God is telling you not to seek your own way, but to call upon the Lord and seek the way that he has set. And what way did he have set? Let's go to Isaiah. Read the next one too. Let the wicked, Let the forsake, wicked his forsake his way and the unrighteous, and the unrighteous man his, thoughts. his thoughts. Let's go back to them thoughts again. And let him return. Hold on. Let's start right there, brother. The title of this thing is You Thought, But God Has Said. Mm -hmm. See, man, wicked ways has got him in trouble. He started thinking about all the thoughts and imaginations about what he going to do. That's why you have so many churches today. See, God said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. So he established his way by establishing his church. Amen. We go to Matthew 16 and 18, it'll tell you that he only got one church. He gave himself for that it. Not that one, not the many, but the it. I know a lot of times in life we'll say, well, brother, I mean, it means all the churches. Well, now it is always in the context of one. And everything you look at, if, it, if that's not the case, then put my name on your bank account. Then let's go ahead and do that, since it don't matter. Because the name don't matter. Go ahead and put my name on your bank account. But it matters. It all matters. Let's go to Isaiah 55 and 8. Because, you know, a lot of times we, we get up, uh, mixed up with our thoughts and what we think it ought to go. 
But you need to stop thinking for yourself and let God do the thinking for you. Isaiah 55 and 8 says what? For my thoughts. For my thoughts. thoughts. So God's letting you know this is the Lord talking. Are not your thoughts. My thoughts are not your thoughts. I know you think you're smart. I know you got a lot of intelligence, a lot of education. (laughs) God is telling you that my thoughts, go ahead. Neither are your ways. Your ways are not my ways. See, we we suffer to change any minute. We might be holy one day. We see us on Saturday. We might be at the clip club. Yeah. You see us on Sunday, we hold it in doubt. Oh man, look at us now. But God is telling you, that's why He's saying it. His ways are not your ways. We suffer to go rogue any minute. But God is going to be the same now and forever. Amen. Continue reading, brother. I'm sorry about that. For as the heavens are higher, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, are higher than earth, a million miles away from the earth, so my thoughts are a million miles away from you. So are my ways higher than your ways. So we need to understand. That God sets the standard for us, not man. The man may tell you it's okay to go to the church of your choice. Well, that's not what God has said. Man may tell you it's okay to live a double life, but that's not what God has said. See, man will tell you all kind of things of what, what to do. But if you want to follow what God has said, you better use that scripture. You better have a book, chapter, and verse for what you're talking about. Let's go to 2 Timothy 3. 16 and 17. Because one thing about God, he ain't going to make no gray areas for you. He's going to put it right there, book, chapter, and verse right there for you to see it. Because he wants you to be saved. He's not going to hide it from you. He's going to put it right there for you. It's just up to you to go out and find it. 2 Timothy 3 and 16 says what? Oh, scripture. Oh, scripture is given by inspiration of God for what? It's proper for doctrine to reprove Reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. So you want to know how to be righteous? Have a live a God life? You got the word. That's all you need is the word of God. If we obey the pattern that God has set, we'll all be saved. If you think about all the sins you committed in your life and all the wrong that you've done, you didn't do it following God's word. You did when you follow your own thoughts and your own actions, your own wicked way. Because if you follow God's way, you ain't going to do nothing unholy. You're going to be very holy. You're going to do everything according to his will. Like Jesus. Why do you think Jesus was sinless? He followed everything that God told him to do. Well, the reason why we sin for because we don't. We do what we want to do. We follow our own way, which is mostly wicked. But if we follow the pattern that God said, we got to think about everything he said to do. First of all, he said we got to all preach and teach the same thing. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Because a lot of times people say, well, it don't matter what church you go to. Well, yes, it do. And I'm going to prove it to you right now. Now I beseech you, brothers. Now I beg you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you, all speak that you speak the same, thing. the same thing. Hold on. Stop right there. We preach the same thing. So I'm at a Baptist church. I'm telling you, you can go to the church of your choice. And I'm in the church of Christ. I'm telling you, now it's only one church, one faith, one baptism. Mm. We're not all preaching the same thing. Well, so that you know that any church of your choice is not going to do. Amen. Because they're not teaching and preaching the same thing. That's easy. Same thing. If you go to Catholics up, up in, in California, it's going to be the same in Texas. The same thing. Anything is the same. But the doctrine is different when you have different religions introduced. They'll tell you it's okay to have instruments of music. They'll tell you it's okay to, to do whatever you want to do in worship because it's about me getting my praise on. Well, when it's all supposed to be about God and worship to Him. Amen. But men think it's okay to have these instruments of music like David did, don't they? That's why you got bands that sound like a concert in most of these places you go to. My grandmother's funeral was a couple of, uh, a couple of weeks ago now. And I, it was so loud, I had a headache for weeks because all the instruments and music that they wanted to get they praise on. Right. It wasn't about God. It's about entertaining them. But if you're going to follow what God has said, let's go to Amos 5 and 23, because they always want to jump to that Old Testament and say, well, David did it. Right. All right, I'm going to give you that. But let's see what God said about that as well. Amos 5 and 23 says what? Amos 5 and 23. Take thou away. Ty, take thou what? 
away from me the noise of those songs. God said, I don't want to hear all that mess. I won't hear the melody of thy vows. Y'all know what a vowel is, violin, string instrument. God is saying, I won't hear them. Take that away from me. I don't care if David did it or not. I won't hear it no more. Let's go to Amos 6 and 5. It start off with Amos 6 and 1 says, whoa. What does whoa mean? First, let's start with that. What does whoa mean? Stop. Stop. All right. Let's go to Amos 6. I'm glad y'all understand. So I don't want to go through another explanation. Now let's go to Amos 6 and 5. We're going to continue with that woe. That woe to do what? That chant. That chant. To the sound, to the of, the sound of the vow. And invent, them and invent themselves like instruments of music. Like who did? David. Okay, so what David did, it's okay. No. God is telling you, no, I don't want instruments of music in my service no more. He said, I don't care if David did it. I'm telling you, you can't do it. <laughs> then the God come down and create a new Bible. I don't think so. So the only thing we have is what he has said. And what he said is, woe to them that do instruments and music like David did. Well, so he's not accepting your drums and your, all that noise you're making. God told you to sing your song and sing praises to him. That's what he told you. And what people will say, well, Brother Graves, it's just a little bit of instruments and music. I'm just helping out God. God don't need your help. <laughs> Not at all. Come on, well. Let's see what happens when people try to help out on God. Let's go to Leviticus. Leviticus 10, 1 and 2. Now, these people thought they was helping God. All we're doing is we're going to bring a little, little incense. Just, just a little something to help God out. God didn't ask for it. So let's see what happens when you, know, you give something to God that he don't ask for. And Nadab, and Nadab and Abihu, the, the sons of Aaron. So now, hold on. First of all, they're the sons of Aaron. You know, Aaron, Aaron was, yeah, he wrote all these, the, 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 the Ten Commandments. Well, God wrote the Ten Commandments. He presented the Ten Commandments. And him and his, his brother uh, was Aaron, was the first priest. And so this, this, I just want y'all to know this because these, this is the minister's son. It's like the minister's son, like Uncle A.C.'s son doing this. This is how bad it was. Mm -hmm. He said, go ahead, brother. Took either of them they took either of them the censer and put fire, put fire therein. therein. All they doing was burning incense. And put they don't think there's nothing wrong with what they doing. They just burning a little incense. Go ahead. And put incense therein. Put some incense therein. And strange fire some strange before fire, fire before the Lord. Which he commanded them not. He commanded them not. God didn't command you to do instruments and music. He commanded you not. But if you go ahead and do it, what's going to happen? Read the next verse, brother. And there went out, and the there went out from the fire from the Lord and devoured them. And, devoured them, and, they, died and they died before the Lord. Well, so you give stuff God and ask you for, you're going to die at the end of the day. You might not die right at that moment like they did, but you're going to spend a spiritual death. That means forever and ever. You're going to be burning up. Boy, y'all think it's hot in Texas? Boy, I ain't seen nothing in hell. Right. I'm telling you. But why do we have people to do all these instruments and music then? What is this all about? Well, it's about entertainment. It sounds good. Like I said earlier, I want to get my praise on. Where is God in the picture? God ain't nowhere. It's about I and my. But what does the Bible say about singing? The Bible says clearly about singing. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 14 and 15. It's going to tell you how he want what he want. Like I told you before, God ain't going to give you no gray areas. He's going to make it real simple and plain for you. And what does he say? What is it then? I will pray with the spirit. I will pray with the understanding. Also, I will now I will play my drums with the spirit. I will play my piano with the spirit. No, 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 brother. I need my banjo. I need my harmonica. Bible says, I will sing with the spirit. I will sing with the understanding. Also. Also. See, the Lord tells you to sing, yeah. not to play and do all this mess that's going on today. But you want to follow what God has said, you better do some singing. You better get rid of all them instruments in your, in your church because God's not going to accept them when it's all said and done. Another thing that's going on in some of these churches is the nominational churches is communion. A lot of them do communion once a year or once a month or whatever they desire to do it. 
But they'll also tell you that it doesn't matter where you do it. Brother Greg, I want you to read. We're going to read something from the Baptist manual. And it's the Baptist church now. This is what the Baptists believe when it comes to communion. The frequency of communion. The frequency of communion is not specified. Is not specified. In Baptist policy. In Baptist policy. It's noted to say in Baptist policy. Go ahead. And there is no anonymity. There's no anonymity. As to its frequency. As to its frequency. Based on relevant scriptures. Based on relevant scriptures. So they're telling you that God's saying that it don't matter when you do the communion. You can do it whenever you want to do it. Keep going, brother. The Hickox Guide for Baptist Churches. Now, they got a guide now. Well, the guide we have is the Bible. They got their own guide. Entitled the Standard Manual. It's entitled the Standard Manual for Baptist Churches. They got a standard manual for Baptist Churches. Now, who you think wrote that? <laughs> man. A Baptist man. <laughs> and go ahead, brother. It states only that churches. Churches what? Have an, have an option. option. As to when, to when, and how, and how often they will serve communion. Okay, they two thirds right. It don't tell us when, just tell us what day. It tells us when is the best as far as the day goes. It says the first day of the week. Keep going. What do they say? Uh, and and they will serve communion. And that the practice has become to serve on the first Sunday. The first the Sunday. And they don't give a specific order that God didn't even give. God said the first day of the week. Now, they don't say the first Sunday of the month. So they're telling you that it's no, not specified. We got Baptists all got together. We can't figure it out. We don't know when to do it. Let's go to Acts 20 and 7. The Bible is going to show you when to do it. Now, the Baptists don't, they must have read this scripture. The Bible says upon the first day of the week. When the disciples came together to what? They was they came together to shoot dice? No. The Bible said they came together to break bread. And Paul preached unto them and read it to the point tomorrow and continued his speech until midnight. So they came together on the first day of the week. Don't each month got a first day? Each each week got a first each, each month and each week got a first week, first day of the week? We got a first day of the week each week. So why don't we do communion each and every week? Why they do it once a month or once a year? Because men have got together and came up with their thoughts. Wicked ways that God has never said. The first uh, Corinthians 16 and 2 also says upon the first day of the week, let every one of them lay a store as God has promised them and let there be no gatherings when I come. See, them preachers understand the first day of the week when they come to collection. Well, they want that new Cadillac. <laughs> But when it comes to what God has said, people get amnesia. They don't know what, what's going on here. But if your communion, your church don't commune each and every week, you got to ask why you're collecting each and every week. Because both of them say upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together. So if they're coming together collection, they better be coming to better commune each and every week. Another thing, you got a lot of uh, what's going on today. You see a lot of Benny Hennism. And I'm going to explain what I mean is got men who walking around in charlatans putting their hands on folks saying they got the power to heal by putting their hands on folks if you truly had that power why not go down to children's hospital right now get all those kids that got AIDS and cancer and heal them right on the spot but you don't have that power that's why you don't do it let's go to uh, Acts 8 and 18 to 24 Acts 8, 18 to 24. We ain't going to read all of that. I just want y'all to know the scriptures where it's coming from. But Acts 8 and 20 says, But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee. Because he wanted the power to lay hands on people to deceive folks. He wanted to have that Benny Hennism going on. He wanted to go around and touch people and have his power. But Peter told him, Man, you got the wrong heart, brother. You trying to go around and get money from folks, trying to amaze them and all that. He said, But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee. Because y'all thought, that are, they're their thoughts again, those thoughts and imaginations. The gift of God may be purchased with money. You can't be no Ben and Hen and think you're going to be saving people up here. It, ain't, it don't work that way. God has told you to do the way God has told you to do it. But men got so evil, they want to do it the way they want to do it. Another thing uh, the churches want to do today is they'll tell you it's okay to have two men marry two men. A man married another man. But Genesis 6 and 19 said, In every living flesh, two of sort, to bring them out the Lord, to keep them alive with thee, they shall be what? Male 
and female. But men have perverted that. Let's go to Romans 125. Men have perverted what God has said. I made this analogy before, but I'm going to say it again. It's like you see a dog running around the neighborhood. You see a dog looking for a female dog, not looking for another male dog. But these homosexuals so mixed up. We got a man looking for a man. It's all messed up. That's not what God has intended for you. Go ahead and read uh, Romans 125. Who changed the truth of they changed the truth of God into a lie. And worship and, and serve the creature more than the, the creator. And serve the creature more than the creator. So he turned the truth of God into a lie. The, the truth of it is male and female. But the world will tell you that it's okay. It don't matter. That's not what God has said. God said male and female. So that's like a person that's that smoking a cigarette. You're going to see a person smoking a cigarette from the lid in. They're going to take the lid in. From the, uh, they're going to smoke from the filter. But these homosexuals are so messed up, they can't even do wrong the right way. <laughs> but you got other groups of men, like Joel Osteen. They'll tell you that all you got to do is bring God into your heart. Don't he sound so eloquent when he say it? Sound good, don't it? Yeah, don't lie, sound real good to people. I mean, it's, it, it'll sound good to me, though. If all I have to do is raise my hand up, well, and I'm done. Well, you have to live favor to death. You don't have to do any of that other stuff. Well, Just raise your hand up, bring God into your heart. Let's go to John 9, 31. See what God said about that. Now, man has told you that all you have to do is raise your hand, bring God into your heart. Let me see what God says about that. Now we know. Now we know. God we ain't got to guess. We know God heard not sin us. But if any, but man, if any man be a what? A worshiper. And do it his will. And do it his will. Him. Because a lot of times they'll say, well, I believe in God though. I have a strong belief. So does the devil. Amen. The devil believes in God. The devil's up there with God. Y'all don't believe me, do you? Go to James 2, James 2 and 19. James 2 and 19. I'm almost done. I got a little bit more to go. James 2 and 19. Thou believest, Thou believest there is God. one God. Doing You're doing good. well. You're doing good. And the devil also but the devil also believe in tremble. I think you want to be a little bit better than that devil, don't you? Yeah. I sure hope you do. <laughs> but Mark 16 and 16 says that what? That belief got to be accompanied by some action. The Bible said, he that believeth and is. No, I was thinking about it, brother. I was thinking about it, but I, I didn't do it. I, I, you know, I, I was thinking about it. The Bible said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But if you... Read the rest of that. But he that believeth not. But he that believe it not shall be damned. So he gave me your choice. You either choose to believe it or you choose not to. You got consequences on either way. You choose to believe it, you got a chance to be saved. If you choose not to believe it, then you got an alternative for just for you. <laughs> I don't want to know what that alternative is. Well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. You're going to hell. Well, come on down. And you don't want to go to hell because it's eternal. Speak the truth. Ain't no turning back. Once you start it, it's over. When Jesus said in Matthew 16 and 18, it's somebody to get that for me. Matthew 16 and 18. Now we're going to talk about God's thoughts on his church and his kingdom. Because man has told you as many ways. But God told you something different. Let's go to Matthew 16 and 18. I'm closing here, y'all. And I say also unto thee, I also unto thee that, thou that thou art Peter, upon this rock, upon this rock I, church. Jesus saying, he doing the talking now, I will build my, showing ownership, just like I said, I want to get my praise on, showing ownership to them, Christ showing ownership to his church, mm -hmm. I and my church. Okay, well, 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 you got that one church, well, where's that church going to start? Well, let's go to Isaiah 2, 2 or 3. Because all these man-made churches, they will start at other places. But Jesus said he promised his church is going to start in one place in particular. Many people will come to the say, come up to the mountain of the Lord to go to the temple of God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways so we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So we know that the Lord's church was started where? 
Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. Yeah. Okay. The next thing we need to know, it was predicted that he was going to church. And another one, let's go to, uh, y'all, y'all, y'all still don't believe me. Y'all looking puzzled. So let's go, I'm going to prove it again. Let's go to Luke 24, 47. Y'all say, well, that's Old Testament, brother. Okay. Look at the New Testament for it then. Luke 24 and 47 says what? 24 and 47, that the repentance and remission of sin shall be preached in his name among all nations. So you, know, you mean you can't be prejudiced, can't be no black Hebrew Israelite and all that stuff. He said all nations beginning where? At Jerusalem. All right. So did your church originate in Jerusalem? If it did not, you don't belong to the one that God created. And if you don't, that's a problem for you. Psalms 127 and 1 says what? Except the Lord build a house. The Lord got to build that house. They that labor in vain that build it. The Lord got to build your house. The Lord built the house that we in right now. The Lord's church is established on AD 33. 3,000 souls were saved on that one day. The denominational church is all started somewhere else. Catholic Church in 606 AD in Rome by Constantine. In 609, John Smith started the Baptist Church in the UK. In 1739, the Methodists started in England by John Wesley. In 1872, the Jehovah Witnesses started by Charles Russell here in America. The Church of Christ in Christ was started by Charles Edward Blake in 1897. The problem with all these churches I just named, none of them started in Jerusalem. And I just read for you that God's kingdom was going to be established in Jerusalem. These churches didn't follow the way God had said they was going to, was going to come about. They all started by men all outside of Jerusalem and none belong to Christ. Not a single one of them. Matthew 7, 13 and 14 says what? Because I know a lot of people say, well, God, you're so narrow-minded. You mean you only got one church for us to all be in? Yeah. Let's go, what would the Bible say about that? Let's go to Matthew, because men will tell you, and any old church will do. Go every, ahead. Every tree that beareth not forth good fruit. Matthew 7, 13. Yeah. Enter you into the straight, straight gate. gate. For wide is the gate. For wide is the gate. Broad is the way. And broad is the way. The it's a lot of people in that broad way right now. All these denominational churches, they in that broad way. Go ahead. Leading to it's leading you to destruction. And many. And that's why you got most of these churches are denominational churches you see today. Just like in the days of Noah, though, there's only one ark. One way to lead to salvation. In any context you look at the spiritual kingdom, it's always in the context of one. It was Noah's ark. It's the one church in now. And when everybody's dead and said and gone, it's going to be one heaven for all the saved. It's always one for what God has said. Bible says in Romans 12 and 5, so we being men are one body in Christ and every one members of one of another. There's only one. Let's go to Ephesians 4 and 4. Ephesians 4 and 4 says there is one body, one spirit, even if you're calling to one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One, 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 one. Not choices, but one. A Baptist, in the Bible, we already mentioned earlier that it says, let there be no divisions among you, right? A Baptist is a division. A church of God in Christ is a division. A Pentecostal church is a division. What, uh, all these divisions are not going to get you any closer to heaven. Anything that's a division will not get you saved. <laughs> Proverbs 14 and 12 says, there is a way that seems right. Joel Osteen seems right. TD Fake seems right. Cleflo Counterfeit Dollar seems right. But the end thereof is the ways of death. Well, there is but one body, y'all. One faith, one baptism. I'm going to prove it to you, and I'm going to close. Let's go to Colossians 1.24. Colossians 1.24. Because a lot of people say, well, my body is part of that church. I'm part of a spiritual body. I'm going to prove you wrong right now. And if you're an honest person with an honest heart, you're going to know that I'm telling you the truth. Who now? Yep. Go ahead, brother. Who now rejoice in, Who my, suffering now rejoice in my sufferings for you? And fill up that, and fill up that which is behind on my afflictions of Christ 
in my flesh for my body's sake. Which is the church. My body is the church. So Jesus let you know the body is the church, the church is the body. So I want you to read one last scripture for me, brother. Let's go to Romans, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 12 and 12. And every word where it says church, I want you to put, uh, I mean, every word says body, I want you to put church. Because I just proved to you the body is the church and the church is the body. I just proved it to you in uh, Colossians 1 24. So this time in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12 and 12, I want you to exchange those words. For as the body is one. So if the church is one, I want you to exchange the word. And has many members. And has many members. And all the members. And all the members. Of that one church. Of that one church. Being many. Being many. Are one church. Are one church. So also is Christ. So also is Christ. I prove to you the body is the church and the church is the body. And it just proved to you there is only one church. Mm-hmm. One church. So how can you be saved? First of all, the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith come by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. You must believe, according to John 8, 24, that he is the son of God. And he died just for you. Then you got to do some confessing. Jesus said, you confess me before me and I confess you before my father, which is in heaven. But then you got to repent. I mean, you got to have a change of heart, change yeah. your mind, change your, the, everything that you were doing that was sinful. But like, no, no longer. You're like, Lord, you know what? I want to follow you now. I'm going to try to be more like Christ each and every day. But then all those things that bring you unto Christ, to get into Christ, it's going to take a little bit more. Let's go to Galatians 3.27. Galatians 3.27. For as, many of you have For as many as you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. You got to put on Christ. I don't care how many how eloquent that preacher is to tell you, just raise your hand up. To bid on Christ, you got to put them on in baptism. And we're going to give you a chance to go to get baptized right now. And we got to get ready to sing for the Savior's invitation. Page 633. 